I know you guys are used to uh, walking around in the dark, so that's okay. Okay, guys, so we've got this, uh, we got this segment we're doing now, uh, or that we're allowing to be done now, Cruising the Cosmos with uh, Joshua Laughlin. And um, he has the floor. So take it away, Josh. You just say when you want me to change that. <laughs> What? I'm just going to hang out with you, buddy. Oh, okay, go ahead. So, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am... Out there, out there. That is my name, Joshua Laughlin. Oh, that's you? Yeah, that is me. So, uh, as always, please hold on all your questions, all your comments at the end of the presentation. We'll uh, do what we can to address them. We'll have a, an open floor discussion. the next slide. So last time on Cruising the Cosmos, <laughs> we talked about star formation, stellar evolution. We talked about how there was there's gases out there, and they get like condensed down from gravity, and then they start getting all like you know hot, and they ignite into stars. True story. Clearly. So, uh, solar mass. It's uh one. It's it's our sun. We, we base everything off ourselves. So, uh, you got five percent. Solar mass, you get red dwarfs. You got uh, one solar mass, that's, that's us. Red giant, planetary nebula, white dwarf, all right. So, uh, 10, 10 times the size of our sun. Super giant, they go boom. They turn to neutron stars. You got uh, super giants over here with uh, 30 times. Black holes. So, basic, same rundown. What's nice though is these, they, they make, the elements. And when they go boom, they spread them out and make apple pie. <laughs> and it's not just apple pie, of course. Uh, they make us. And uh, everything you see around you is always uh, forged inside dying stars. So moving on, we're going to finish up where we left off and we're going to talk about stellar classification, talk about some notable stars and some weird stuff out in space. Oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. It's uh, just a mnemonic phrase to help you remember the, the key points of stars. You got M, K, G, F, A, V, O, just in case you couldn't read it there. And that uh, talks about the cold to the really hot stuff. And here's a Harvard chart that demonstrates you got uh, your O, which cuts off here, but O, and that's a blue, blue, white, uh, blue, and it's about 16 times the size of our sun. You got B, which is blue white, deep blue white, and that's uh, about two to 16 times the size of our sun. You got A, which is a white, blue white, and that's a uh, little about the uh, size of our sun, a little bit bigger to two. Then you got your F, it's yellow white, white. So again, a little bit, a little bit larger than our sun. You got your G's, and that's our sun. And we're from what, point A, one. Yeah, we're good. So uh, K, your orange, the pale yellow orange, a little bit smaller. M, red, to a light orange red. Again, small. And this is your, your main sequence stars. So it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit funny later on. And uh, the system's changed. It's a uh, more than Keenan system. They added Roman numerals to uh, help clarify things with the uh, star spectrum. And uh, a good uh, reference point is our sun is a, a G25, which uh, you could say is a, it's a yellow sun, it's two tenths towards orange. It's a main sequence star. Some uh, notable class O's. Got Delta Orionis. That's some nifty. We got HDE 319718. So, class B, Regulus, Rigel, Spica, class A, Sirius, Deneb, Altair, Vega. Hey, I know y'all know these. <laughs> class F, hey, there's Polaris. Isn't that just nifty? Class G, the Sun. Oh, wow. Class K, Alpha Centauri B. Class M, 
They're getting them red. So now things get a little bit weird. D.Y. Cannes Majoris, the largest star we've ever seen. Beetlejuice, Honturus, and all these other wonderful stars. So let's uh, talk about some notable stars. 51, was it Pegasi? Pegasi. Yeah. Yeah, Pegasi, well, all right. So uh, 50.9 light years from Earth, constellation Pegasus. Here's your right ascension declination. Apparent magnitude is 5.49. Spectral classes, G5V. Here's a nifty little picture that someone took. Sure wasn't me. <laughs> so we got uh, Arcturus. And uh, its visual magnitude is negative 0.04. 36.7 light years from Earth. Spectral type K1.53 <coughs> PE. Stands for peculiar emissions. Got your right ascension declination. It's a wonderful little picture. It's an orange. Orange giant. Four Cassiope, apparent magnitude of 4.96, 770 light years from Earth. Special type is M13. Unfortunately, couldn't find a picture of this, but it's a, it's a red giant. So uh, I challenge you to go get a picture. I want to see it. <laughs> Beetlejuice. And uh, I, I really hope everyone has seen this. If not, well, yeah. So uh, 640 light years from Earth. It's, uh, its magnitude varies from 0.2 to, to 1. It's a constellation Orion. If you don't know what Orion is, ah, moving on. So a uh, spectral type, M2, 1AB. Here's your right ascension declination. It's a picture of the uh, Orion constellation. And uh, that right there, that's Betelgeuse. Here's another picture of Betelgeuse. Awesome telescope, and what that is is a bow shot that's being created because it's going supersonic speeds as it's flying through the interstellar medium. So, I know all y'all love these uh, carbon stars. I know somebody's uh, trying to do the carbon star uh, from the Astronomical League. Terry, and, uh, me, yeah. Terry over there. So, I forgot to point out a carbon star. It's red. I like red. And it's a uh, 1,300 light years from Earth, constellation Lepus. Lepus. Lepus, my name is the best. Thank you. Spectral type is C7, 6E. Here's you some uh, apparent magnitude of 5.5, right ascension declination. And it, right there. Right there. Hmm. This is what it's looked like. So we got a uh, B.Y. Canis Majoris, largest star. It is 3,900 light years from Earth. It's constellation Canis Major. Current magnitude is 6.5 to 9.6. Spectral type M3-M5E. Right ascension declination. What's nice though is this star is, uh, it, there's two different uh, ideas. One, if it was at the center of our solar system, it could reach out to Jupiter or Possibly Saturn. We're not too sure on that yet. It's a pretty picture. So, uh, talk about little white dwarf. It's so, uh, this one right here. Compared to our Earth. Earth. Just so you didn't know. 16.5 light years from Earth. Constellation Peridanus. Current magnitude is 9.52. Spectral type DA4. Your uh, ascension declination, and for all you people that love diamonds, it's believed that in the core of a white dwarf is a 10 billion trillion trillion carat diamond. So uh, happy mining. Red dwarfs, and uh, they're the most common in our uh, our galaxy that we've have seen. They're small. They're not very hot, and you're not you shouldn't be able to see one with your eye. Just Visible naked eye. <laughs> Just uh, what they uh, they think they found one out there. So brown dwarfs, getting, we're getting really small, and uh, they're about the size of Jupiter, a little bit uh, 
a little bit larger, and uh, they're, they're considered failed stars because they they don't ignite in their their core. They don't they don't get the, the hydrogen ignited. What's nifty is uh, it rains. And they act more like planets. They act more like Jupiter than anything else, and it rains iron and sand. That's a concept of one. If you were to see it, it would appear like a magenta. And you got your neutron stars. They're more, they're not, I don't know why they call them stars, because they're, they're the aftermath of stars, or what's left over after supernovas and whatnot. This is one, and compared to New York. So that's how small these things can really get. And uh, on my first presentation, I talked about pulsars. Same thing, it's a neutron star, just highly magnetic. It shoots out these beams, and we can detect them. They, they make these very distinct signature pulses. What's nifty is uh, it's been theorized that if we were to use, uh, we'd go out in deep space, and we could use these for GPS. Take about three of them, triangulate your position, because pulsars are very distinctive. An artist rendition of a pulsar. Now, something that terrifies me more than most anything, <coughs> even spiders, <coughs> magnetars. They are highly magnetic neutron stars. It's, it, it's, it's insane how magnetic they, mag magnetic they really are. And from the distance from Earth to the moon, it would rip the wristwatch from your arm and erase magnetic strips on your credit cards. From inside 1,000 miles, it would rip the iron in your blood cells out of your body. If it gets much closer than that, it will rip your atoms apart. This is a, an artist's rendition of a magnetar. Lastly, I wanted to just talk about wolf ray stars, specifically wolf ray 104. It's 8,000 light years from Earth, constellation Sagittarius, our parent magnitude 13.54. Unfortunately, when this star blows up, it should uh, release gamma ray bursts. Now, we don't know for sure, but uh, it looks like its poles pointed at us. Now we've done other tests that says it might just be a little bit off. We're within close enough range that if it does shoot gamma ray bursts, we're going to get hit, which means no more us. And that could happen anywhere between now and 100,000 years. But we won't know when it happens. It'll just happen. <laughs> this is uh, an image they, they saw. It's uh, got a, a companion star, and they make this nice effect. And that is the end of stars. And uh, as Will pointed out, we do have a, it's a segment here in Cruise in the Cosmos. And y'all seen the, uh, the presentations we gave here, but it's not just that. We do have, uh, we have interviewed Will when we talked about star parties. We, uh, we discussed the group to try to get it out there. But most importantly, we have, a, it's a science talk show. And we discuss everything from the basics, or plan to talk of everything from the basics, to uh, theories. Everything that involves space, that is our goal. It's our highest priority is science literacy. Our first episode actually will be premiering tomorrow. The website's cruisingthecosmos.com, and I invite anyone here that wants to be a part of it to come on as a guest. You can either get with me after the meeting, or you can just shoot us an email. That's it. That's all I got. I got to rush through that. Thank you very much,